Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. My name is Takuya Miyasaka. I am a network engineer in KDDI, which is a Japanese network operator company. Today, we will talk about the network anomaly event prediction and optimal resource control in cloud native network functions with my co-presenter, Takaya Miyazawa. Um, actually, we would like to attend this conference on-site, but due to the COVID-19 restrictions, it became very difficult for us to go to Spain, so we appreciate the event management team for preparing this remote presentation. This is an introduction and our motivation of this talk. The use of cloud native network functions in the teleco industry, such as 5G and MEC, have started to emerge. From the network operator perspective, the benefit of CNFs include quick self-deployment, flexibility of operation and management, and diverse business model accommodation. While these benefits are attractive to us, but as a network operator, we need to fulfill the typical telecom services requirement, such as high availability, resiliency, and optimal resource utilization. To realize these requirements, there are some challenges we need to tackle with. For example, to realize the extremely high availability, we need to predict network anomaly event and resolve the anomaly event before our customer have bad experience. This slide summarizes our lessons shared in today's talk. In the first section, I will talk about the network anomaly event prediction in the 5G network using the eBPF and deep learning technology. After my talk, Takaya Miyazawa will share his experience on the optimal resource control in CNF. So let me begin the introduction of the network anomaly event prediction part. The network anomaly events are inevitable for network operators and occur almost every day on our commercial networks. Typical example of the network anomaly events are increased network latency and increased packet loss rate and increased CPU utilization rate. So this network diagram shows a 5G core network on the Kubernetes environment. And let's consider an example of a packet loss event in the control plane of the 5G core network. So for some reason, the packet loss rate in the control plane of a 5G core network built on the Kubernetes starts to increase at some moment. If we don't take any action on this issue, the packet loss rate will gradually increase and at some point it will have a significant impact on the communication between network functions in the control plane. And finally, it will cause a major problem in customers' 5G services. To avoid such a situation, the monitoring system needs to detect this network anomaly event as soon as possible. This is our motivation. Our motivation is to detect these network anomaly events rapidly and precisely. But uh, is it possible? Our hypothesis for this project was uh, basic metrics such as CPU utilization rate are not enough to realize the rapid and de precise detection. This is because the amount of information of such a basic metric is very limited and we consider it insufficient for the future prediction by deep learning. 
So our idea was EBPF observability. So before jumping into the details, let me show you an overview of our approach. Our approach consists of two parts. And our target application is 5G core containers, which is built on the Kubernetes on top of a Linux kernel. Firstly, as I said in the previous slide, we use the eBPF functionality in order to correct the per container detail metrics. So this diagram shows an example of eBPF metric and shows the number of TCP transmission of a 5G core network functions container like AMF. And uh, this, you know, the eBPF metric are uh, measured under an um, anomaly event that the packet loss rate increases gradually. So as you can see from this diagram, as the packet loss rate increases, the number of TCP transmission also increase due to the TCP packet drop. On the other hand, this observation also implies that it may be possible to predict network failure from these eBPF metrics. Secondary, AI and ML. We used an AI ML model from the eBPF metrics to predict the future key indicator of 5G QoE for customers. This example diagram shows the prediction of the number of UE registration failure in 5G network. If we can predict the key indicator precisely, we can detect the anomaly event that violate a threshold or SLA. So these two things are overview of our approach. And from the next slide, I would like to talk about each part in detail. So eBPF. So this table shows some of the eBPF metrics collected in our work. So we collected some CPU related metrics like uh, run queue latency. Also, we collected several TCP related metrics such as, you know, the TCP transmissions. So next, these two graphs show the eBPF metric behavior when an anomaly event occurs. The top graph shows the behavior of run queue latency in the case of the CPU utilization rate increase event. And the bottom graph shows the behavior of TCP retransmission in the case of a packet loss event. And as you can see from these examples, so several eBPF metrics are positively correlated to anomaly event. Therefore, uh, we expect these detailed metrics can be applied to deep learning for the future prediction. Next is the detail of the AI ML part. We use the LSTM model, which is a recurrent neural network based deep learning model for the future prediction of time street data, such as the number of UE registration failure. As a data input of LSTM, we apply the basic metric of each container collected by C advisor and the eBPF metrics. And using the Using these past actual metrics as input, LSTM can be used to predict future metrics. This slide shows the variation results of LSTM in the packet loss event in the control plane of the 5G network. In this evaluation, we simulated many anomaly events in our experimental 5G network 
and collected metrics of 5GC network function container for the LSTM learning. Our first evaluation result shows the eBPF enables more accurate prediction. In the case of eBPF and she advisors basic metric, accurate prediction was achieved at 150 seconds after the start of anomaly event. On the other hand, without eBPF, at the same 150 seconds time point, the accurate prediction were not possible. This upper line shows the actual value and the lower dashed line shows the predicted value by LSTM. So as you can see, there is a large estimation error without eBPF. So although these results were obtained in our test environment and not evaluated in actual commercial networks so far, but it is expected that the eBPF will enable rapid and accurate detection of anomaly events in 5G network. So this is a summary of my part. Thanks to eBPF, detailed per container metrics can be collected even in CNL's 5G network. And our first evaluation result shows eBPF and AIML will enable faster detection of future network anomaly event in CNL's 5G network. With this, I finished my part of the network anomaly event prediction in 5G network. And from the next slide, Miyazawa will talk about optimal resource control. Next, I'm going to introduce our R&D on optimal resource control in cloud native network functions. My name is Takaya Miyazawa from NICT Japan. This is the summary of this talk. NICT operates a public network testbed called JGN in Japan. There are several access points, but this time we have created several virtual machines and constructed a small scale of virtual network in Hokuriku region, middle and north part of Japan. The virtual network consists of several nodes, each of which has several virtual machines. Monolithic network functions are directly deployed on a virtual machine as a VNF. Cloud native network functions, often called microservices, are deployed on containers created on a virtual machine or host OS as a CNF. We have installed uh, Etsy open source manual OSM on the JZN uh, Hoclick region and it operates uh, these network functions. We have also deployed our AI machine learning engine for analytics of data such as CPU utilization and on computational resource control, especially for CNFs, and uh, connected to the uh, OSM system as a northbound component. The important thing in this talk is that we have uh, implemented an additional interface, especially for auto scaling. That interface is the main topic in this talk. This is a framework of AI-assisted computational resource control and management for network functions. This framework is compliant with ITUT wide 3177 standard. AI machine learning should be installed into both data analytics and resource control decision to provide high agility to find a solution of a dynamic resource adjustment. The data analytics system analyzes and predicts the resource usage uh, based on measurement results obtained from the underlay uh, network and or cloud infrastructures. That is usually completed in seconds or in minutes by utilizing machine learning. Based on the analysis results, uh, the resource control system decides a solution to execute resource arbitration among services and or uh, network function migration which is completed in seconds or in minutes by means of machine learning. Our goal is to simultaneously achieve 
maintenance and enhancement of uh, quality of services, uh, effective utilization of uh, computational resources, and agile processing of data analytics and resource control in the time guarantee of seconds or minutes. This figure illustrates a verification button network infrastructure consisting of uh, four network nodes, seven links, and two end hosts that we have constructed a part of it on NICT public network testbed called JGN, a Hokulik region, and con constructed other parts in Kokanai City in Tokyo uh, and uh, interconnected both networks on um, around 400 kilometers. We have uh, installed an uh, Etsy open source uh, version 10 into our network function operation system by Kubernetes installation. As northbound components, uh, there are uh, AI engine, OSM client, and a visualization system. The AI engine obtains uh, data from the underlying infrastructure, such as CPU utilization of each network function analyzes the data and decides a solution for adaptive resource reallocation to each network function. So what is lacking or insufficient in the OSM version 10? Firstly, it cannot obtain uh, some information that is necessary for uh, adaptive resource allocation to CNFs with a higher accuracy and higher scalability. Concretely, the OSM cannot guess the current real-time situation of uh, fluctuation in CPU utilization in every second, although it has a function of auto-scaling. Secondly, it has no function of designated scaling, for example, designating another virtual machine uh, to migrate a containerized network function from the current virtual machine. Besides, uh, it is impossible to designate the amount of CPU resource to be increased or decreased to each uh, CNF. Thirdly, the, uh, the manageability is relatively low, especially in terms of uh, support for visualization. Fourthly, uh, the operability is relatively low, especially in terms of arranging the form by manual operations. For example, when calling a web API and receiving JSON reply. Finally, no AI ML function to analyze various data to be reflected in network function uh, operation. So, uh, to solve the issues that I showed you uh, in the previous page, we have added two styles. One is an additional interface for a function enhancement called the direct interface. The other one is our AI engine to automate CPU data analytics and computational resource control for CNFs by utilizing AI and machine learning techniques. I'm not going to explain the AI engine in this talk, but uh, briefly speaking, uh, we adapt several machine learning algorithms uh, such as support vector regression, lasso, and encoder decoder a recurrent neural network for time series CPU data analytics and automate, automatic uh, resource control decision. This, this talk uh, focuses on this uh, direct uh, interface for uh, functional enhancement. This is some overview of a direct interface which is added to the OSM. The northbound components such as AI engine and the visualization system and the middle components such as the BIM Kubernetes and NFP infrastructure are connected with each other by the uh, direct interface via Kafka bus, uh, without going through the OSM inter internal components uh, such as Lifecycle Manager, uh, Resource Orchestrator, and so on. The main objectives of this additional interface are to obtain necessary resource information, uh, resource arbitration among CNFs, and NF uh, migration from a server to another server. In other words, uh, the additional interface may only be effective for these purposes, and the original OSM interfaces and the internal components may be effective for all other objectives. So it would be better to equip both interfaces in the system just by adding the direct interface to the current OSM. So what are the benefits of a direct interface? 
The first is to obtain a VNF CNF uh, CPU utilization in every one second. We utilize C group to realize it by tuning for uh, each VIM, which means each F quantity cluster, we can obtain higher accuracy and scalability in obtaining a real time situation of CPU utilization of each network function. The second one is uh, designated scaling. In horizontal scaling, we can specify a virtual machine to increase a port for each CNF. The current OSM uh, Kubernetes cannot do this without our uh, direct interface. In vertical scaling, we can specify the amount of CPU uh, allocated to network functions. Again, the current OSM uh, Kubernetes cannot do this without our uh, direct interface. The third one is higher manageability. It's supposed to uh, visualize uh, a lot of information obtained by multiple OSM NOSPAN interfaces. The fourth one is higher operability. We have a, made a convenient command, DCTL, which enables an easier measurement of processing time due to a function to, uh, function to uh, designate asynchronous or synchronous to each request. So finally, general conclusion for two things. The use of CNFs in the telco industry has been uh, receiving much attention in recent years. While CNFs uh, enable quick service deployment, uh, we have still been uh, investigating a solution to realize uh, typical requirements of telco services, such as uh, high availability and optimal uh, allocation of the computational uh, resources for CNFs. In this session, we have uh, introduced our uh, experience in utilizing CNFs as an infrastructure for telco services while satisfying these typical requirements. In the former part, we have introduced lessons learned on eBPF observability in a 5G core network deployed by Kubernetes and showed that the detailed metrics of each 5G and container measured by eBPF enable the detection of future anomaly network events in the 5C with deep learning. And then we have introduced our ongoing activities on autonomous computational resource control system for CNFs, being compliant with the DHC OSM standard and deploying the network function operation system in the NICD network testbed called JGN. So, and thank you very much.